kind of bummed. Uh, got a little issue. I don't know if you call it an issue, but I'm kind of disappointed. Go back to a couple of my videos. The burning. Yeah, well, burning went great. And everything was great about it. Except this right here. It's what happened after the burn. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker. Welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and hit that if you want to follow a small farm in southern Oklahoma of bison. Yes, bison. American bison. Those of you that have been following us, thank you guys. Um, it's growing and I love it. And uh, you know, as that grows, this bison herd is going to grow soon. We've got babies uh, that should be here in June and July. Okay, so let's get to the point here. I'm a little sad. After the burn, grass came up, good, fresh Bermuda grass came up for the bison, and then something bad happened. We had a freeze, and uh, it zapped it. And now all that burning and that fresh grass that came up, which is perfect, is what we wanted. We had some good rainfall, and now it's dead. That zapped it. It absolutely zapped it. And so now um, I'm dealing with that. But the good thing is, watch my last video. We built new fence for the bison. And so the bison have a new pasture. Great timing. It's perfect timing actually, because as this stuff started to die, um, I got the fence done and we put the bison in. But take a look and what I want you to see is what it did I've got some aerial footage for you here and I want you to be able to see the difference in where it burnt and where it did not burn notice the difference in color of grass uh, you can see the dead uh, grass that was zapped by the frost and then you can see the green grass where we didn't burn which it had enough on it um, and that grass wasn't harmed by the frost. See, this is a perfect example. Right here, this is where the calves, our two bull calves have been staying, but you can see how green this is. Um, they haven't been heavy grazing really because they're young and they're kind of being selective of the certain grasses that are here. But you can see there's, there's still a lot of grazing ground here um, and a lot of grass that these two calves really haven't eaten or grazed on. But look at the difference, okay? Their lot that um, wasn't burnt to what was burnt, okay? And even right here, here's a perfect example. You can see one patch where we didn't get a burn, but it kind of went around it. But you can see this grass is already established here. So you can already see this grass was established when we did the burn probably. And so the fire went around it, but the last freeze didn't kill it. Okay. This grass is already tall enough and, and strong enough where, um, it didn't zap, uh, the new growing, but man, that fresh growth from the burn where we burnt, man, it really, really got it. You guys are probably wondering where the bison are. There's one. It's that claw paw. But the bison are uh, laid up in the middle of the day. You know, it's like three o'clock right now. So they're laid up in the middle of the day and take breaks on grazing. But something else I wanted to show you is how much rainfall we have. One of the new projects that I'm gonna start is I'm going to, um, another big project, is have um, water systems. 
I'm looking for some big loader tires that I'm going to use for a new watering, can, uh, watering system. But look at this. These bison, they won't come up to the corral unless they need to get some water or, or you know, we're doing the supplement feeding. But what I want you to look at is how much water is built in these um, or is laid down in these terraces. So this is an old farm. You guys have probably seen what terraces, how the terraces are formed on a lot of these old farms. But we've had so much rain. These terraces fill up with water and the bison, they drink out of it. And it, the reason it's filled up so much is because all the rainfall down the hill and also there's a pond sitting over there and this is the runoff. So you got natural fresh rainwater right here. Maya's taking advantage of it. She likes playing in the water. But the bison don't have to come up and they can um, drink that water. That one's a little bit muddy because I drove through it. Next big projects, I'm trying to get going. I'm get, I've got a water well checked and I've got um, a lot of stuff spinning. So hopefully sometime this summer, um, here pretty soon we're gonna get those uh, water system established. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the big, huge uh, loader tires. I'm not, the, not sure on the specific name of the tire, but I think that's what we're gonna do is use those big tires and pour concrete in the bottom of it and have an automatic um, water system and a float on it. So this is what the ground should actually look like um, where it didn't burn and where it didn't zap it too bad. So this is what it should look like, this Bermuda right here. Um, that's what it did look like about literally a week, a week and a half after um, the burn. Man, it looked really good and this whole place was super green, but this is what it should look like instead of that brown stuff. And you tell me why and how bison poop can't help the ground. Look at this. Look at that mound of grass right there. It's got the patty on top of it. All the nutrients went down into the grass and has actually pushed up the pile of poop. Notice the grass around it. Nature taking its course right there. Poop doing its job, putting those nutrients back in the soil. You guys don't know what this is. It's called a Russian thistle. I know it's a thistle, but uh, species wise, I wanna say it's the Russian thistle. That is a nasty, gnarly Russian thistle. That sucker needs to die. Bermuda is really not the bison's favorite grass. Um, they'll graze it. Um, you know, like I said, the, the short grazings. Looks like they haven't been on this very much. But the bison really do not favor Bermuda. Um, ideally, we wish we had native grass in this lot. Um, there's just a little bit of native grass, but Bermuda is an exotic grass and it's an invasive grass. But I really wish we didn't have Bermuda. Um, so we may, hopefully the burning will help. And uh, at least there's, well, hopefully someday we'll be able to get some native grass grown in here. May have to do some uh, cultivation or some dry tilling at some point and maybe we can get some um, native species of grass out here okay i'm gonna try something new so what i did is i went to walmart i got a remote control truck well it's an atv utv uh, made by polaris i guess but i don't know it was, it was the coolest remote control car i could find Thought it was a little four wheel drop, thought it was perfect for the situation. So I got this. What I'm gonna do is try something new. I'm gonna strap something new to it. Let me show you what it is. Something else I wanna share with you. We'll see what we got in the box.
Uh oh. Boom! Look at there. Got the GoPro 8. Your guys' comments really paid off. I want to be able to bring you in, get you a little closer, and I think uh, I think this is going to do the job. Uh, using Daniels from Arms Family Homestead, his uh, GoPro 7, and how clear it was and how smooth it was, really uh, talked me into this. Plus, they were $100 off. Um, so, why not jump on the deal? Um, little project I'm going to try to work on. I've got to figure out how to strap it to it, and... We'll see. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. I want to get as close to the bison as I can. And uh, we'll see if it bothers them or not. I don't know. We may have to worry about Bell Star. She can be a little crazy. You guys saw that with the drone. But I'd probably be bugged by something flying above me making a buzz sound. But we're going to try this, get up close to them, and we'll see how they react. And, you know, I just want to try to get some close-ups for you guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it's a day, you know, unfortunately the grass got zapped by the, that fresh grass from the burn got zapped by the, uh, the late freeze we had. That's okay, that's, that's part of it, that's part of nature. Um, that green grass is already starting to show back up from all the rain we've had. We got our two bulls out here, Chaske and Teddy. They're doing great, lots of grazing ground for them, lots of fresh grass, because there's only two of them, so plenty for them to eat. But I hope you guys are excited. With the new GoPro that I got, I just had to get it after the footage that you guys um, liked. I got some good comments from y'all um, when we worked these two guys and one of our cows. Uh, I appreciate the comments about the views that you like, the multiple views, uh, and the close-up from that GoPro. I borrowed that GoPro 7 from Daniel um, from Arms Family Homestead, Boone, my brother-in-law, and I strapped it to my chest. If You guys couldn't already figure that out. But... Um, I just had to get a new GoPro. I just had to, and uh, I'm wanting to try some new things with it and try to get a little bit closer for you to get to the bison. So I um, will try some new things, and with that remote control car, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. But thank you guys for following. Uh, subscribe to us um, if you'd like to follow this small bison herd of American bison in southern Oklahoma. We're just a small farm trying to trying to grow the herd. So thank you guys. You follow us on Instagram and Facebook.